It's the 40th anniversary of the so-called Islamic Revolution and the Iranian regime is celebrating it pathetically, to be honest. And what's or the reality is that it's called an Islamic Revolution because history is written by the victor. But what's very clear is that the revolution was never an Islamic Revolution. If it was Islamic, then it would have had the characteristics and demands of the Islamist movement, the demands of the Iranian revolution in 79 was not we want decapitations and Sharia court and stonings and veil and segregation. and segregation and so on and so forth. They were demands against the Shah's dictatorship for freedom and for equality. And so what's very clear is that the revolution was never Islamic. It was suppressed by the Islamic movement. And in fact, an entire generation was slaughtered in Iran for this regime to be able to stabilize itself. Just recently, one of the mothers of Khavaran, Mother Lotfi, who uh, was one of the leaders of this campaign of mothers demanding accountability for their children who had been executed by the Iranian regime. She recently passed away. And again, that's just one example of the horrors of this regime. Absolutely. And the continuation of that resistance against the Islam is from day one up to today. And today's movement against the Islamic regime is very much continuation of that radicalism of uh, 1979 um, revolution and I think when you look at the history of the establishment of the Islamic regime the Islamic regime was established after suppressing the uh, 1979 revolution uh, remember women's march in International Women's Day in Tehran uh, in, uh, in the 80, 1980. Remember the um, struggle in Kurdistan. Remember the Caspian Sea uh, region and Turkmen Sahara, uh, people trying to sort of establish uh, um, local sort of uh, um, um, people intervention in, in running of uh, um, the society. Uh, remember the fight for free press uh, in Iran, and remember the slaughter of the whole, you know, a whole generation of Iranian intellectuals, radicals, and uh, social activists. This narrative that the revolution in Iran was Islamist, was the Islamic revolution, is both uh, uh, um, advocated by the Islamic regime and the right-wing monarchist, uh, and and the right-wing sort of alternative in. Um, you know, internationally you could see they are trying to uh, dissuade people and prevent people from repeating that uh, uh, experience. Yeah, and there's a lot of propaganda against revolution and the reality is that revolutions are ways in which people can actually have a say in their situation from the bottom up. Otherwise, it's very often, you know, uh, in positions from above, whether it's coup d'etats, whether it's regime change from above, whether it's the alternative that Trump and Bolton have for Iran, uh, you know, or the um, so-called the Pahlavi, the monarchy, uh, you know, the monarchists have now for Iran. It's it's always from above in a sense, and revolutions are not violent. It's the violence that is used to suppress them. Uh, it, it's actually one of the best ways in which people can intervene in the society and change it for the better. And also, when you actually look at both, uh, uh, any revolution, people have dry, tried to reform. People have tried to change from within. But the, all the roots are closed. When you look at the uh, 1970s in Iran, it was a completely closed society. Nobody was uh, allowed to participate uh, into running of the uh, society, except a very small minority linked to the uh, Shah and the monarchists. And look at the Islamic regime today. People have tried to make changes as possible, but all the doors are closed. That's why people, the only means of fundamentally changing society for the benefit of the population, revolution remains the only solution. I mean, that's what, where we are. And if people have the right to change the current situation uh, in Iran and remove the Islamic regime and change the Islamic system, if people in uh, Syria had the right to, uh, uh, you know, uh, revolt against the Assad regime, and uh, for the same reason people in 1979 in Iran had the right to... Um, uh, to revolt against the uh, monarchist regime and try to change it. Unfortunately, not all the time, the outcome and results are what people desire initially, and sometimes you get defeated. But that doesn't take away the essence of the radical demand for a better society. To, I mean, look at the today's uh, demand in Iran. Non-religious, people want a society where religion doesn't role, play a role at all. Or they want a secular uh, system. They want... They don't want a justice system which is based on revenge. 
Rather, they want a system which is based on uh, looking at the problem, uh, trying to resolve the issue, and trying to reconstruct uh, uh, the society so it doesn't get repeated. These are the sort of things that uh, people in Iran want, and they have the right uh, to establish that order. Mm. And one of the things, too, is this whole thing of, uh, you know, Trump uh, intervening in Iran and people wanting, some segments of society wanting U.S. intervention. I mean, we need to look at the facts. Where has U.S. government intervened that has been beneficial to the population at large? Iraq, has it improved? Afghanistan, Latin American countries? Um, and also, if you look at the history of Iran itself, U.S. intervention has always been negative, whether it's the imposition of a puppet regime, the Shah's regime, whether it's involvement in a coup d'etat in 1953, and even the Islamic regime was the result of U.S. foreign policy during the Cold War. The, uh, their policy was to create a green belt around the Soviet Union at the time. So, in fact, they met at Guadeloupe at a conference and decided that they preferred an Islamic alternative. So, so looking to Trump or looking to reform in the Iranian regime or looking to, you know, reactionary political forces rather than people's actual movement, which is really the, the real hope in Iran. Um, it, it's self-defeating and it's, it's, it's really helping uh, those forces trying to, you know, put things together behind scenes or from above rather uh, than and relying on absolutely. people. Absolutely. I mean, the, the result, uh, look at what John Bolton is trying to sort of uh, um, organize Mujahideen, the most, you know, uh, sectarian religious sect that you could have, rent them off, that's what they are, or to trying to support the right being sort of monarchist uh, uh, um, in Iran. Um, that's not that's not a solution for Iran or Middle East. I mean, they, they are uh, everybody's getting uh, together in Warsaw, trying to sort of you know come up with a plan. The reality is that uh, the narrative that we want to give and the narrative of the Iranian people, we want a society which is free from religion. We want a society that just the system is based on uh, um, reconstruction of society rather than revenge, and that's. Uh, that's why the, uh, it's important to give a decent narrative of a 1979. The true history of 1979 mm. must be written not by Trump, not by Mujahideen, not by the Islamic regime. It will be written by the next revolution in Iran, which is demanding a human society. Yeah, I mean, just to reiterate what you were saying, we have huge social, political movements in Iran, whether it's labor, labor rights movement, women's movement, youth movement against the death penalty for children's rights, for animal rights, for environment, for the environment. All of these are based fundamentally on human, secular, modern values. And, and really that is uh, the hope of Iran, those social and political movements, those civil society activists and organizations working for a different and a better world. And that's the, the future hope of Iran, really.